But why is there such a big question on making a movie on Savarkar, which really intrigues me? No person from the Congress was ever sentenced to Kalapani, so there has to be something there, how helpless and how cruel it must have been to have been in that uh, cell for years. He was there for 11 years. I would say it's an anti-propaganda film because there's so much propaganda that has been spread around in the name of Mr. Savarkar. Mm. I think that whole thing of trying to make me feel guilty about attending Ram Pratishta is just bullshit. I wasn't paying attention and I pissed my pants in a party and I had to sneak out of it. Well, I'm never interested in people, I'm more interested in ideas. That's propaganda, my friend. So, hello everyone. Joining me today is a very special guest. You have seen him in Highway, you have seen him in Sarabjit. He's coming with a new picture, Swatantreya V. Savarkar. Randeep, why do you think, telling his story, because you've been calling him an unsung hero, a story that has not been told, why do you think it's interesting and it's very important at this point of time in our country? Why not? When we can make a movie on Mahatma Gandhi in the 80s and we have movies about Sadar Patel, two of them, there is Mangal Pandey, uh, there is Rani Jhansi, and then I've myself done Rang Rasiya on Raja Ravi Verma, I played Charles Sobraj. So why is there such a big question on making a movie on Savarkar, which really intrigues me? I say, why not Savarkar is my question. Back to you. Um, why, why, why do you think he, there should be not a movie made on him? Definitely. I believe it's a very crucial time also. But don't you think that releasing a movie about a figure who has been debated so much for so many years, it's going to trigger a lot of political wars because we are just looking at the Lok Sabha elections in coming few months. Well, it is coincidental that this movie is releasing on 22nd of March. Um, I wanted to actually release it uh, on 15th of August last year mm -hmm. and then on Republic Day this year, earlier on. But as things happen in the movie business, it was not possible. And so the most befitting day for him would be Martyr's Day, a day before Martyr's Day. And um, yes, there is a Lok Sabha election on, and, um, but this is a movie. Yes, it is a movie about a controversial figure, and it's a movie about f Father of Hindutva, which uh, the ruling party at the moment uh, is, is a, a one of their ideologies. So yeah, there is bound to be chatter about it, but I think that's a great opportunity to people, for people to go and read up about it, and read up about him, and watch the movie and have an opinion about him. I'm not giving them an opinion, I'm giving them facts. Mm. And it's up to them to decide whether he was veer or not. Mm. So yeah, it's a coincidental thing, but um, I don't mind it because it will create more conversation. More conversations is why I made this movie because I felt that his story was brushed under the carpet and he's not a part of our syllabus, he's not a part of our uh, public discourse, um, whereas, you know, his, his contribution to our freedom struggle was immense. There was, in fact, not much talk about the armed struggle that happened in our country uh, for freedom mm. over the years. And um, anything that happened was either termed as decoity or uh, a, 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 a mutiny, mm. so to speak. But if you're fighting for your rights to freedom, fighting for your rights to, you know, uh, express yourself, then, um, He's a great figure to, to, as an example of how you can stifle one area or, or one aspect of the freedom struggle completely and eclipse him mm. and, his, uh, uh, um, uh, and his contributions. Though today, his ideology uh, somewhere is the one that is at the forefront of our political discourse. Mm. But where, where does your ideology lie? The Gandhian way or the Savarkar way? Well, I am a filmmaker and I'm an actor. It is my job to assess both. It is my jo job to understand both. All ideologies and all things come through circumstances. Mm. Uh, Gandhiji's ideology of non-violence is absolutely noble. It's very good, it's great, it's one of our biggest uh, um, identities in the world that India gave the biggest non-violent movement. But apart from that, could we have not won it by arms? Mm. There were just that many British in India and there were so many of us. Mm. Why could we not win it by arms? And that's what Savarkar ji had always 
propagated. In fact, uh, even in our history books, I have read that it was 1857 Sipoy Mutiny, hmm. which Savarkarji in 1906 wrote a book called 1857, The First War of Independence. Hmm. After that, the whole country was disarmed. And in the 1870s, some voices, some revolutionaries like Vasudev Pharke, who you would not know anything about, uh, took up arms against the British. And uh, he was sentenced to jail and sent to Yemen. So all the people who raised arms were either sent to Kalapani, Mandalay in Burma, or to Yemen. Hmm. And then in 1885, a liaison body was formed between the British educated Indians and the Britishers hmm. to counter this uprising and uh, have uh, 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 not have conflict between the two. But the conflict is inherent because one is oppressing the other. Hmm. So uh, keeping that in mind, his um, contributions were immense. His, that book was influenced all the armed revolutionaries that came after him. For example, uh, HSRA, which was the Hindustan Socialist Republic Association, hmm. uh, which was headed by Chandrasekhar Azad, it was uh, mandatory uh, for people to, who, who joined it to have read that book. It was also distributed as a part of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose's Azad Hind Forge. Uh, uh, when they gave out, gave you a uniform, a gun, and fleets, they also gave you this book to read. So it was an all-encompassing. Uh, 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 inspirational book of how we can fight the British with arms mm. in a violent revolution and throw them out of the country. Okay. And since you, at the very beginning of the answer, you said that you are a movie maker yourself. I believe this is your directorial debut. Yes, it is. Yeah. And uh, as a part of a research, I believe you went to Andamans also. You visited the Savarkar cell. I have been to Andaman. I have seen the jail. I have is, seen the cell as well. It was it horrific. It was horrific. It indeed is. How was the experience there? Because when you enter that cell, you sense something. What was that sense that you felt there? Because I read the caption that you wrote along with your picture that you could barely spend some minutes there. How can a person be given two times of life prison to stay in that Saad Baigara. Yeah. Well, I had gone there. I was on a recce and I was also the director. So I was thinking how I'll place the shots and all that. And then mm. I, it occurred to me, hey, you're playing the role as well. So I said, OK, for an experience, well, just you guys lock me inside. You guys go to your other work and take <laughs> my phone with you. And I sat inside, not his cell, but another cell like mm. his. Because his cell, you cannot shut because it's a, it's a smart arc. Everybody should be allowed to go in and out. Um, and I thought I, I, I'll be OK. So I sat there. And then within a few minutes, I started feeling claustrophobic. I started feeling uneasy. And I was trying to get their attention. I was screaming. They couldn't even hear me. And I was trying to get out. And that whole experience then gave me a little glimpse into how helpless and how um, cruel it must have been to have been in that uh, cell for years. He was there for 11 years. Hmm. And uh, they were not only put in cell, he was in isolation many, many times uh, for months on end, six months on end. Hmm. And um, it's, 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 it's torture. And then obviously they were made to work on the kolu for hours without any water. They were made to make uh, uh, ropes out of the, the husk of the coconut and many other things. So it, and also they, the cells don't have any sanitation. So it was a very, it was a huge torture that was imposed upon these people who were ready to, ready to take arms up against the British. And on the other hand, I do raise a question, even in my trailer, that no person from the Congress was ever sentenced to Kalapani. So there has to be something there that is left unexplored, unexplained and uh, uninvestigated in hmm, that sense. That's a line in the trailer as well. I yes. saw the trailer yesterday. But Ran, uh, Randeep, I believe in the last couple of years, this is sort of a trend that has come to the entertainment industry that when you are trying to tell a story, specifically a biopic, it ends up becoming a propaganda. And then the questions are raised over the movie, the narrative, the storytelling as well. Are you Did scared they... of that angle coming up? No, I would say it's an anti-propaganda film because there's so much propaganda that has been 
you know, spread around on, in the name of Mr. Savarkar without knowing who he was, without knowing anything about him. Hmm. Just give him name tags and use him for political mileage and to run down the father of Hindutva just because a party which, which somewhere follows Hindutva is in power. When Attenborough's Gandhi was made, nobody called it a propaganda film hmm. at that time, right? So uh, it has become a part of our discourse that any movie which does not fit a certain narrative is automatically a propaganda film. Hmm. No doubt there must be some movies, but I don't think the government interferes in the film industry so much that they, nobody helped me to make this movie. This movie I've been trying to make for two years. And uh, not only did I co-write it with Utkarsh Naithani, I directed it, I acted in it, and I ended up producing it, putting my own money in it. So who's helping me? Where is the government? I hope they, I wish they helped me <laughs> <laughs> in making this movie. So I don't understand this propaganda thing, but I'm not scared of it either. Hmm. If it, people, some people, no matter how much you tell them the truth, they're going to believe what they want to believe, and it's up to them. It's a free country, they can believe whatever they want. But in fact, you attending the Pran Pratishthan ceremony at the Ram Temple also became a point of debate. And now the What's trailer... Wrong? What's wrong? I am a born Hindu. My family, though we are more Arya Samajis, Jat are more Arya Samajis, uh, uh, than uh, follow the rituals of Sanatan Dharam. Or not the rituals, but some of the practices of... Especially it came about because the marriage ceremonies were so elaborate, so the, the poor farmers could not afford it. So Arya Samaj became very popular in places like mm. Haryana. But the greeting in Haryana is Ram Ram. So why are we so afraid of owning our own own uh, 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 history, our own Sanskriti, our own re religion, so to speak? There should be no shame in it. But yes, there is has been a shame attached to all this for decades. That though we are a Hindu majority, why should be why should be apologetic about uh, about celebrating and glorifying our gods? our leaders, like Savarkar, what's wrong with it? Hmm. I think that whole thing of uh, feeling guilty about or trying to make me feel guilty about attending Ram Pratishta is just bullshit. Okay. So I think you have it answered a, great a lot moment. of people. It was a great moment and I felt so much joy and the whole country felt so much joy. So what hmm. was wrong with attending the Pran Pratishta? So many other actors also did. Yeah. Only I was making Savarkar. Why did they go there? Hmm. Hmm. So it is absolutely uh, 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 that's propaganda, my friend. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Also, another topic uh, in the debate would be Manipur. Hmm. And since you had one of your wedding festival in Manipur in Imphal, the wedding, the wedding happened yeah. in Manipur. Yeah. yeah. And the attire you embraced the Manipuri culture. First of all, congratulations for that because you're you. recently married. How's the married life treating you? It's Apart from that, treating you well. It's yeah. treating you well. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from that, if I would ask you, since you went to Imphal, how was the situation there? Uh, situation was uh, tense for sure, but it was under control. Mm -hmm. um, the situation there is a, a, a deeper indigenous situation than uh, we make out of it. Uh, mm -hmm. There has been. Uh, mistakes committed in the past which have resulted in today's situation over there. But the reason to go there was to the marriage or ladki ke ghar jake hi shadi hoti hai. So I wanted to embrace and respect her family and her culture by going there. And uh, it brought a lot of joy and it put Manipur in the news for some right reasons as well. Hmm. So it was a good thing. So I'm from northwest, I went to northeast to get married. I had a reception in west in Bombay and up north, and I went for a little break with my wife to Kerala. So I think we co covered entire India, <laughs> like Savarkar's Akhand Bharat. So I think I am, you know, uh, doing what I am saying. <laughs> Lovely. Last but not the least, Randeep. This is also a new trend in the Bollywood industry that I have noticed is about the competition at the box office. The collection, the 1000 crore club, the 100 crore club. Do you have any expectations for your movie about that clubs? I have, uh, I don't know which club it will be in, but I just hope it reaches out to people mm -hmm. and it, it, it provokes people to think uh, and go back and revisit mm -hmm. our history, 
go deeper than what is just plainly on top and go there. All these clubs are made as a hierarchical system, as a competition between who's a bigger star, who's not. A movie that makes thousands of crores is not necessarily a great one. It's a great marketing uh, effort. Um, and movie that is not so uh, gotten those numbers is not necessarily a bad one. Mm -hmm. It is just that they did not have a proper marketing strategy to put it out there. So I hope we get our uh, strategy right of getting this movie across to people. I have made it for young people. I have made it in a way a very modern movie uh, 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 with all the aesthetics and the screenplay moves very fast. So not only should you go watch this movie to correct your sense of history, but also it's a very engaging uh, a movie which will enthrall you. So yes, I am expecting that it reaches out to people, especially young people. Definitely, and it's aligning with a very special day. 23rd of March is the Martyrs Day. The movie is releasing on 22nd of March. You should be watching it in your nearby theatres. But Randeep won't let you go that easily because I have a compulsory section of rapid fire which I do with all of my guests. Yeah, rapid fire seems to be my speciality these days. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be. All right. So your first question in the rapid fire round, Randeep, is what's the most adventurous thing that you have ever done? Jumped off a cliff with a bike. Ooh. What's the most embarrassing thing that has ha ever happened to you? God, should I speak about it? <laughs> Just um, please. I wasn't paying attention and I pissed my pants in a party and I had to sneak out of it. Oh my God, <laughs> that's really embarrassing. If uh, you could only eat one cuisine for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ah. Parathe. Wow. Which parathe? Plain. Piyaz ke. Piyaz ke parathe. No, no, noni ghee ke saath. Wow. <laughs> Proper Haryanvi. Noni ghee ke saath piyaz ke parathe guys. <laughs> What's your favorite way to unwind after a long day of shooting? Oh. Watch television or listen to jazz music. Okay. What's the most memorable fan encounter that you've ever had? Ooh. It was in my first movie and we had premiered at Venice and we won the, uh, the Golden Lion Award uh, for Monsoon Wedding. And after the screening, this Italian man standing outside that red demarcation uh, called out to me and um, says, uh, I want you to autograph uh, my girlfriend. And he pulled down the top like this. Oh my God. Had me autograph it there and it was my first kind of autograph and I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. <laughs> What's uh, the strangest rumor that you have heard about yourself? Oh, I, I don't get to hear rumors about myself or no, neither about other people. I'm never interested in people. I'm more interested in ideas. That's a really nice habit, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. To keep yourself away from anxiety, you should be following that. What's the most valuable lesson you have learned from your career in acting? Uh, that we are all our flaws is what makes us human. Lovely. Last but not the least, if I could ask you, Sarbjit or Veer Savarkar, project that's closest to your heart. Veer Savarkar. I have uh, I've been involved in it in many more ways than just an actor, mm -hmm. and uh, it is uh, about a very great man. Uh, a very huge, towering personality who I had to be very responsible towards as well. Definitely. Thank you so much, Randeep, for speaking to CNN News 18. We are really looking forward to 22nd of March, hopefully Pleasure. to connect real soon after that as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you.